All right, so uh, what we want to talk about first here on the inside is your control panel. Uh, it's got a lot of switches and buttons and things like that. Uh, we'll start from the left and go right. This is your radio. Um, source turns it on. We can just go to. So, really simple. Uh, great thing about this, this this front piece actually will come off um, if you guys are worried about someone stealing it or something like that. Uh, not a big thing, but it does come off. Uh, here you have a step light, a security light, and another security light uh, for your outside stuff. Uh, your inside speakers, which run off of that, are here. Uh, when we're talking about your speaker system, there's your subwoofer. But uh, I also want to let you guys know, uh, this system is linked into your TV, uh, which is kind of nice so that if you guys are wanting to watch a movie, things like that, um, it's all linked together. It's, it's linked to your stereo system, your TV is, um, which is all around. And there's also a second remote right here, um, which is kind of cool. So obviously you see like source, mute, uh, on and off, uh, there's a couple disc selections, things like that. So. Uh, to learn out more about that stuff, we could talk about your radio and your stereo system for about an hour here. Uh, we're not going to do that, um, but to learn more about that stuff, check your manuals, guys. There's a lot of reading material on this, so that's that would be the place I would go. Uh, this is your slide out button right here, um, in and out. Uh, we'll take care. Of, we'll do that very last. This is your awning. I was talking about. It's just that button, uh, in and out on your awning. Um, and then this is your generator stuff here. So we talked about two hours every month you guys need to run your generator. Uh, this is where you can track that as well as your fuel level um, and your generator itself. Um, just like outside, hold it down at the stop part and then push in at the start and that'll run your generator. This here is your control panel. So um, you have your fresh water tank uh, showing full, your holding tank which is your black tank, uh, your toilet, that's that's showing empty. Your gray tank, which is all your others, like your sinks, things like that, uh, that is also empty. Uh, you have your, your battery here, which is low, fair, good and charged, fully charged battery. Um, you can switch the baths to see your different gray tanks. Obviously, both of them are still empty. Um, and this is your water pump. So if you guys, on the, on the door side, I showed you that potable water spot uh, to fill up. If you guys are dry camping or something like that where you don't have city water connection, uh, you'll use that potable water, but you'll turn your water pump on. And uh, you can just leave this switch on, and it'll kick on and off when it needs to. Moving down to your TV, um, the remotes and other manuals and things like that for your TV are in the, in the kitchen. Uh, but the one thing about this, make sure that this is strapped in. Uh, when you're going down the road, um, make sure that you strap that in. That's that's really important. Uh, moving down, you have your fireplace. Um, you've got a couple of controls on this at the bottom here. You've got a heat side, um, which you can control whether it's actually sending out heat. So you can have it with light and heat, or you can have it just light, which is on this side. Uh, you can control like the flames and like the, the lighting of the flames and things like that. So. There's a lot of information on this, guys. There's also a manual on that, but that's pretty much twist the nozzles and you can see what they do. Got a lot of storage around here. Um, good storage up top as well and things like that, so that's really good. Um, you've got your fire extinguisher here, uh, right next to your door. If you notice, it's next to your door because you're supposed to grab it on the way out. So uh, don't try to be Mr. Fireman, superhero or anything. Just Exit the unit, and that's to kind of keep your tail covered. So, um, into your kitchen, we have your uh, countertops here. Uh, and the first thing you notice going into your kitchen is this. This is actually uh, your outlet uh, reset area. So, if you pop one of your outlets, whether outside or inside, this is where you come to reset them all. There's also a test button there uh, so that you can test that. Corian countertops, uh, absolutely great countertops. You guys have three inserts, um, so you have two for your sink and one for your trash can. Uh, the one thing we want to tell you about these, while you're traveling, going down the road in transit, uh, you want to make sure you store them uh, in, your, in your couch itself. So push them in there, uh, push them down the side, however you want to do it. Uh, but those want to be locked in so that they're not bouncing off of your countertops and breaking things as you're going down the road. 
a lot of storage room here in your kitchen. Uh, so that's really nice. Here's all of your reading material here, guys. There's one other thing I want to tell you about your reading material. There is some warranty cards in here. Um, so you have a warranty for uh, your your stove, and you have a warranty for your fireplace, and you have a warranty for your roof. Um, and there's cards in there that you guys have to fill out within the first, I think it's 14 days of when you get this. So make sure you go through that, fill out those cards. You have to send them in. Um, but if you don't, you don't have your warranties, and that's really important. So just take the time to look through that paperwork, fill those out, and uh, get them in in time. Moving on, you have your microwave here. Um, if you've worked one, you've worked them all. They're pretty, all the same, pretty much all the same. Uh, you've got your vent here for when you're cooking, as well as your overhead light. So that's kind of nice. To your stove's tops, uh, you just can flip them all to light right here. And uh, you have a sparker. They're obviously not lighting because we have your tanks turned off right now. Um, another great thing is if you're trying to light your water heater and it's not lighting or something like that, or um, you're trying to light your oven and it's not lighting, you know, one thing you can do is go ahead and turn this to light and actually take like a like a fire starter, which is actually in your kit, and uh, purge the system here at uh, your stove top, which will actually help. Um, and so that's nice. When it comes to your oven. Um, not really sure why you guys is put that up there with that, but um, there's a pilot light down here that you have to turn to pilot, push and hold, and then light that pilot light down there. Um, so that's why we give you guys a fire starter, a uh, little little stick lighter. Uh, that way you guys can light that. One thing to know about this: if you guys are cooking something, then you stop, and you're gonna cook something else, maybe some cookies later on. Uh, 20, 30 minutes later, you know, it's it's okay to keep that pilot light on. We don't suggest leaving your camper and keeping that pilot light on. It's just a safety thing. Um, nothing would really happen, but it's better to be safe than sorry. So uh, just if you're going to be leaving or you're not going to be cooking anything, just go ahead and turn that pilot light off. Underneath that, we have your control panel here. Uh, you've got your breakers and your fuses. Um, next to all of your fuses, you have uh, red LED lights here. Um, that shows if a fuse is blown. So um, if you have a complete circuit, say it's a light switch, and uh, you have that light switch on and the light's not working, you can come over here and the red light next to that fuse will light up saying, hey, we've got a problem here. Uh, we need to replace that. So um, that's a really nice feature. Just If you can't figure out why something's not lighting, just make sure that circuit's complete and come over here and check that light. Moving over to your fridge, um, you guys have a really nice fridge. Uh, it's it's a self temp set uh, fridge on and offs up here in your freezer area. So obviously the light went on on you. Um, auto and gas. So if you look up here, there's an auto and there's an LP side. Right now the little dot is next to the auto side, telling you that it's in auto mode. That means that it's going to first try to go off electricity, and if it can't find electricity, it's going to use gas. It's going to use your LP tanks. Um, that's the way we suggest you run it. Uh, for some reason, you want to use um, your gas, then you can go ahead and flip this switch, and it'll switch to your LP as it's just indicated there. Um, one thing you're going to notice about your freezer is if I shut this freezer right now, it's very, very hard to open. Um, that's because it creates kind of a vacuum seal to get that air out. Uh, and give it 30, 45 seconds and you'll be able to open it uh, nice and easy again. So, Underneath your fridge you have your subwoofer for your sound system. Um, just wanted to point that out for you guys. Um, over here, for a little bit of a bottle opener, uh, you've got your fan vent for your fantastic fan, which is right over there. So that's these switches right here. Uh, the vent itself has to be open in order for the fan to run. So just a thought: if it's raining, you might want you guys might want to get like a cover on that so that you can have that running all the time, or just don't open it if it's raining. Moving down here, you have your LP detector. Uh, this is going to tell if you guys have a gas leak. Um, if it goes off, it is unmistakably loud, uh, and it's telling you to get out of the unit, uh, go outside, turn your LP tanks off, and then figure out where the problem is. 
Got more storage here, guys. Um, and this is the back to your um, sound setup um, for the garage, which we're going to go look at in a second. Um, but this is just a whole lot of more storage for you. You have your bunk bed system up here. There is also a uh, cable and outlet there in case you guys want to hook up a TV back up there. So just something to look at. When you come inside to this area, uh, you'll notice that um, you have your table and picnic table set up here. Uh, there's actually two cushions that go in here. I'll grab one of them real quick for you um, to show. So if you want to use this as a bed, you just insert both of these cushions here uh, and then you can use it as a bed. You've got your top bunk here. But also just take those off, put those legs down before you drive it down and you can turn it into a picnic table. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have enough room, so we weren't able to show you guys, but you do have the rear patio area. Um, there's information about that on the web. Uh, I believe our site has some information as well as a video, and there's some stuff on YouTube. Uh, but there's also stuff in your owner's manual on how to, how to work that cable system there. Um, so, just safety first when it comes to that, guys. Right here is your um, TV for the garage area. Um, you've got a nice size TV that actually works on a swivel which is kind of nice so you can direct it to what whoever's wanting to watch it something like that you got your port here and then your electricity here as well um, this will actually um, allow you to run this separately from the the one inside in the in the family room so that's something else to think about that you're able to uh, run these separately if you want to enable that you've got a nice little just like uh, coat rack hanger rack right here um, if you guys have been out and you got dirty clothes or something like that, you need to hang up. That's what that's for. Right around here, you have your second bathroom, guys. Um, light switch on the wall, as well as the same fantastic fan vent um, right there with it for up, up above. On all of your toilets, um, the toilets are a push halfway down to add water to the bowl push all the way down to flush. Um, so your your bathroom up t up and by the bedroom is the same. Uh, I just wanted to show you guys that. Last thing before we leave your garage area, uh, I'm going to show you this um, emergency exit. Um, if in case you guys do need to get out of this um, back area, garage area in an emergency, you just lift this red tab, push all the way out, um, pull the screen obviously and uh, push that all the way out and you'll be able to exit through the window. Um, the reason there's a screen on this is as you see right now you can push that somewhat of the way out and support it and have it be used as a ventilating window. Uh, so that's kind of a nice feature as well. Up here is the switch to your guys' fans. Uh, there's one here and one over there. Uh, so you have two fans. You also have a power cord there um, on that side. But you also have a second um, AC back here. Um, and it's got its own temperature settings here. Um, it's the same type of um, control unit uh, as up front. So I'll show it to you there because it's hard to see here. But you just have a second one here to run that unit there. And over here, uh, the last thing we're going to talk about is your bed lift. Uh, you have a switch here, up and down to raise and lower your bed. And then you have a couple light switches, one which is inside, and one which would be your outside lights behind your garage. Moving back into the living quarters, we're going to go up the steps and uh, Right here, before we go up, this is the same uh, unit that we had in the front, in the back. I just wanted to show you. This is your fan here. You can turn your fan on or on auto. Your thermostat cool or heat, and then your fan speed low or high. Obviously, if it's on, you can, you can definitely hear the difference. So, uh, you've got a couple light switches here. Uh, one to your kitchen lights, and one to your ceiling lights here. 
this is your smoke detector here. Um, there's one other alarm that I want to point out once we get into the bedroom, which is your carbon monoxide alarm. Um, but this and your carbon monoxide alarm both run off of uh, batteries themselves, so you need to check those batteries just like you would check uh, your alarms at your house. Coming into the, the bathroom, yeah, you have your water heater switch here. Um, once again, we talked about that electric side. Um, if you don't have that toggle switch outside on, no matter how many times you flip this switch, it's not going to work. So um, that's just something to keep in mind. Uh, you've got another toilet. It's the same type of foot flush halfway down, adds water all the way down, flushes it. Great size shower, guys. Um, you've got a water saver feature here so if you're showering you like the temperature but you want to save some water uh, just flip that lever there uh, and it'll turn it off uh, allow, allow you to lather up or something like that and then you can turn it back on to keep your temperature and then this is your vanity here um, it's just got storage it's, it's a sink just about like any other one so got a couple towel racks here on the wall which is kind of nice as well we're gonna move into the bedroom now things I want to mention before we start in the bedroom itself uh, you have your carbon monoxide alarm here which I just talked about so that's there um, and you also have your antenna right here uh, this is your antenna for your TVs um, and so in order to crank it up just crank it up a little bit uh, it'll go it actually sits about four or five feet above your unit so you want to make sure you don't drive off with this still up uh, or you will damage it uh, but once you get it up you can actually pull down and kind of twist it any which way in order to get better reception. One thing you want to make sure of is that these two triangles here at the end um, are lined up with each other before you bring it down. So very important. There's a little bit of uh, like a cradle that your antenna comes down onto. So uh, make sure that those are lined up or it won't sit properly. Besides that, um, you're your area, your uh, air conditioning unit itself, it has a quick cool system here. Uh, you just flip these levers uh, and, and the air, the cold air is dispersed all into this area. Uh, otherwise, just shut those valves and uh, that lets it dispense through your, um, your ductwork. Your TV in the back corner here, guys, um, it's the same as the one in the garage area, uh, still on that swivel. Um, that pivot type of thing, so that's really nice. The one thing I wanted to show you back here, this green light is your antenna power booster. There's a black button right here I'm about to push. As you can see, that light went out. If I push it one more time, it goes back on. Uh, that allows you to get a stronger reception um, anywhere you are. So, um, But that also will run off your battery, guys. So if you are not plugged into power, and you're not going to be using your camper, uh, make sure that you unflip that little 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 button um, so that you don't drain your battery. And when it comes time to actually being in your unit and getting ready to use it, your battery's dead. Got some more storage here. Um, got a nice size closet in the back. Um, besides that, we have pretty much covered everything in the unit itself. Um, we're gonna go ahead and show you how the, the slide outs work. Uh, and then that will, that will conclude the walkthrough. So the slide out button which I mentioned is right here. Um, in order to push the slides in, the first thing you want to do is you want to check um, around your slides such as doors, cabinets, anything like that. Uh, you don't want to leave cabinets open that might be torn off. If As you're going on the road, this cabinet obviously goes out farther. So if this slides all the way in, this cabinet is open. When it comes time to, to push the slide out, it'll rip this cabinet right off. So you always want to check around your slides before you push them out. But then it's as simple as just holding in a button. Um, before you do, you always want to make sure that the door is open. Uh, the slides disperse a lot of air. So making sure that door is open is very important. And then it's as simple as just holding in that button. Uh, your bedroom slide will come in first. Uh, it's the least resistant. It'll also go out first. Uh, and you'll see that that bed actually goes all the way up until uh, your 
your drawers right there. Now your main slide's coming in. If you actually get a shot of the door, uh, you can see how much that's opening up. I'll, I'll, let, I'll release and I'm going to push the button. And you can just see how much air is being dispersed with that. So that's really important that you guys have that open. Um, we're, we're pretty much through with the walkthrough. Uh, one thing I want to let you guys know uh, before we go, if you have any questions, any concerns, uh, anything that you guys need help with on your unit, uh, feel free to give us a call. Uh, we're here for you. Uh, we're here six days a week, and we're, uh, we're more than glad to help you guys. Uh, we appreciate your business and uh, purchasing from us, and we hope you enjoy your time.